After years of helping online businesses make more money by advising them on their taxes and finances, I've now made it my mission to reach as many profitable online businesses as possible to help them save on their taxes and make more money. On my quest, I bring you proven and real profitable online business owners, and we dig into how they do it. All right, guys, thanks for being here again. We're on the few, the proud, the profitable. This is the podcast where we talk exclusively to six and seven figure business owners, people who are doing that online specifically. You know, there are a lot of people in this space who fabricate their success, exaggerate, a lot of people who are downright liars, unfortunately, <laughs> here. So what we're talking, the, what we do here and the only people we talk to are the ones who are actually making money online. And someone who's doing really well with that is Adley Stump. Adley, thanks for being here. Thanks, Mike. I'm really excited. Yeah, that's fun. So what we do, I told you before, we try to keep this to 15 minutes. Haven't had great success doing that, but we roll through about five questions in that time and just get some advice from you on stuff that you've done and what you've had success with. That's perfect. Okay, cool. So first one, I need to change it because it's not even a question, but in a couple sentences, just tell us who you are and what you do. Gosh, if I was to say it in a word, it would be creator. Yeah. And you can take that a million different ways because it is a million different things. Everything from the host of The Adley Show for Facebook Watch's original content programming. We do two episodes a week for them and content distribution across Facebook and Instagram for myself as an entertainer. Uh, but also we create distribution systems for other larger influencers and brands. Yeah. And your, cha your personal channel has quite a following on it too, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty big. Yeah, I was on the, I got my start in this whole entertainment world on The Voice. I was on Team yeah. Blake, got to tour around with him for a little while, and then had a couple of videos start blowing up online. Like the first one that ever went crazy, it was 19 million views overnight. I put chickens in a bathtub. And people freaking loved it. Then so I was like, well, this is a lot easier than jumping in a van. <laughs> yeah, I'm It was wild. So I got more and more into that world. Um, and then, you know, I had like a fan page. Then that was on my personal page that just blew up. And then now Facebook, um, and they started looking to compete with Netflix and Hulu. Yeah. And work, but <laughs> they were trying. They're lo always looking for more original content. Yeah. And that's hard to find. A lot of people just regurgitate memes and aren't creators. So it's, it's a lot of work. Sure. But as an entertainer, it scratches that same itch that music did. But yeah. instead of having to come up with an idea, then wait for a suit behind a desk to give me permission right. to put it out there and distribute it and market it and invest in it for me, I get to turn on a camera, shoot it, relay that emotion, and have the immediate return. Yeah, and that's what's so cool to me, and I'm not creative at all, I'm not an entertainer at all, but it's so fascinating if you look back even 30 years, just the pathway to becoming, getting exposure, being successful, yeah. now with social media, and you just look at these YouTube stars, you, Bo Burnham, you had Justin Bieber, you had all these people where they just had a, little, a camcorder and internet access, yeah, the, the the different pathways that are available to you now, it's just, it's pretty astounding compared to a, a few decades past. Oh, it's incredible. And if, I mean, if you've got the ability to be consistent with it, mm -hmm. that, that really is key. Consistency and authenticity really kind of go hand in hand. I think those are the two key ingredients that you need yeah. with, with, whether it's with, with anything, whether it's trying to be a lawyer, whether it's trying to be a doctor, <laughs> you have to show up every day, be consistent, towards a goal and the path is always going to change sure and it's not going to look like exactly what you thought it was going to yeah. look like but it's usually better if you are dedicated to the journey and you're doing it for the right reasons yeah well that's what's always funny to me one of my buddies and business partners is a guy named adam lincoln auger and they have a they do <laughs> adam, yeah yeah they're they're big on youtube more for instructional stuff their big channel is called Isle of basketball they've got close to two million subs at this point but everyone who I say, well, how do you do it? What do you, you know, and he's very successful on Facebook, all social media. And they're like, well, how, what's your secret? How do you do it? And he said, consistency. And obviously there's all this secret sauce in the back and there's all these things you have to do. But that's what's always funny to me with, with most things in marketing, really, where people will just pound it. They'll just be blasting stuff out all the time and go, you know, posting four times a day. 
and they keep that up for two weeks and then it's done. They exhaust so themselves. And then yeah. they get real <laughs> frustrated that nothing happened. So, you know, creator burnout is, is, seems like such a real thing for the people who do it long time. Long well, I think that they're doing it for either the wrong reasons and also four pieces of content a day. I wouldn't necessarily say that's the most quality content. Like even me right. trying to turn out two episodes a week is barely doable if it's going to be good, right. you know, on top of everything else. But I think consistency for sure, but people have such an entitled mentality. Mm -hmm. Now where they see, it looks like people just took off. I made videos for, I vlogged for two years and nobody, wa nobody watched it. I spent so much time doing it, but I loved it. I don't know why I did that. I made no money, I spent money doing it, but I got better at the craft. I grew as an entertainer and, but, and I never outsourced the editing because I get better at learning how to do the transitions. Oh, that sucked. You know, and you just get better. Yeah. I mean, I would. I did it for years before anybody cared. Yeah. And I just slowly got better. And I'm going to, if I'm doing it right, I'm going to look back in six months from today and be like, that's so oh, embarrassing. I was so bad back yeah. then. And that's how you know you're getting better every six months. You're not embarrassed by the work you did six right. months prior. Well, there was, um, we work with a business coach and he says something on the lines of, you know, there's no shortcut to not sucking that you just, you just have to do it. But any, anything you're doing, you're going to be, even if you're talented, at, even if you have a huge propensity to it, there, there's no way to have a shortcut to the experience and getting the reps in to, to yeah. actually improving. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. All right, cool. Question number two, what's the best thing about having a profitable online business? Now I'm so, I still blows my mind that I have one, a good one, because <laughs> I didn't for so long. I was bankrupt in this business. Yeah. After The Voice, I um, signed a terrible contract, didn't know what the heck I was doing, super yeah. green, and was bankrupt. And necessity is the best teacher mm -hmm. you could possibly have because you were forced to figure it out. Did you really, really want this dream or did you just think that you did? Yeah. Because now you've got to dig yourself out of a hole and figure out how to do it. And that'll teach you what you're really made of and what you really want. Mm -hmm. So the best part about having a profitable business is it feels good. It is like, Oh my gosh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And I created this, like there was nothing, there was less than nothing. And now there is something. And that just feels really good. It's a good level of personal fulfillment, even past the money. Like I was just as happy without the money, but now that there's money, it well, gives me more freedom. It's probably the answer you hear the most often, which is flexibility and freedom. Yeah. But there's also a lot of noise. So with all the clutter and all the busyness, constantly trying to stay linear and focus on what did I say I wanted to do when the money would come? What is this mm -hmm. money going to actually help me do? How do I keep it going? Because nobody can help anybody by staying poor. Mm -hmm. Right, money is a resource. It's not a form of happiness, but it is a resource. So when you have more of it, you have more resources to give more back, to do more, to create more. Yeah. Well, that's what we. It's always funny. We'll talk about businesses that will say, "Oh, I'm not focused on the money." You know, this isn't about money for me. And very rarely are they actually successful businesses, and rarely do they stick around a long time. And we were writing a blog one time. The example we gave was Bill Gates is right now that he is by arguably, at least in terms of dollar figures, the world's biggest philanthropist. But that's because starting out, they're laser, laser focused on making this huge amount of money. And then it gives you the ability to do whatever you want with that money after the fact. Absolutely. Past a certain point of money and it's different levels for different people. Some people are going to need 10 million, $20 million. And then that caps the, their happiness level. The guy who started Burt's bees, I think he was, even though he was worth millions and millions of dollars, I think his cap at 10 grand a year, that's about as much happiness as he was going to get on money. Cause he was such an odd guy and lived such an odd lifestyle that his hot water heater broke. He's worth $5 million. He didn't want to pay for hot water here. So he's just boiling it on a, a wood stove. So it's, it's different for everybody exactly where you hit that level. But money gives you a degree of happiness, but caps off really fast. And you get this yeah. diminishing return. So, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Just focusing on now that I, why did I want this to begin with? 
Exactly. One of my mentors says it so well. He goes, so many people, we know so many people that are wealthy, but they're so unhappy mm -hmm. because they focus so much on their business why. But if your business why doesn't align with your personal why, you're going to be very you're going to be very sad. You can have a lot of money, but still be unhappy. So what is your personal why? Why do you want to have business? Why do you want to make money? Know what your personal why is. What makes you fulfilled? Why are you here? Then say, what is my business why? I want to be a millionaire. Okay, why? Because that lines up with this. Then you know when that comes, you're linear. Right. And that was really a game changer for me. Yeah, yeah that makes total sense. All right, cool. Question number three. What we hear a lot from online business owners and one of the things that we spend a lot of time doing with our clients on is managing cash flow. We hear that that's a challenge for people. We've seen that's a challenge for people. So how do you deal with that? <laughs> Not very well. I was, <laughs> it's probably my weakness. I was telling you, I was up till midnight last night doing my P and L's because I haven't hired you yet. Yeah. And, and my head is just spinning where that is not my skill set. but I know enough to be like, all right, round numbers, this is coming in, this is going out, I'm good. But am I nitty gritty down to knowing what I need to do come tax time? No, I'm not. This is, yeah. my business has grown very fast this mm -hmm. year. So that's something that I'm catching up, trying to learn. And you know what? My, it, my time is not best spent trying to grow that skill set. No. I need to understand it for sure. But as far as getting in there, uh, that's where also money comes in with taking my team and being able to put the right person in that place. Yeah, our thing whenever we're talking to people is we don't want them to become experts in tax code, tax law, accounting. It's more just having a tactile feel on the reality of what's going on because that's where people seem to get in so much trouble is when yeah. they become so far removed that they don't have a pulse on yeah. what's going on where had one client where they're dealing with embezzlement because they were so far removed from it. Oh. Even, even the really famous fraud, fraud cases you'll deal with, um, like Nicolas Cage was nuts and he was buying dinosaur skulls and like private islands. But in his lawsuit, he claimed that his financial advisor did, led him down the road to financial ruin because he just totally removed himself from that part of things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, especially online with, the stuff that y'all have, it can just be interesting because it depends a little bit on your model. If you're subscription based, if you're launched, if you've got product launches for the e-com guys, they've got, they re up inventory or have new ones where they've got this huge outflow at the beginning and then it starts to level off. But online, yeah. especially cause there's such a big scale. A lot of times you can have this crazy amount of money that comes in, but then you've got then depending on, what you're having to pay out either beforehand yeah. or after the fact, then you're having to hand a lot of that back. So you just have these big fluctuations that you've got yeah. to for. Exactly. And that's what, for me online, it, I mean, it probably comes from 30 different places and it looks 30 different ways every single month. So I'm like, all right, Facebook pays every month. That's direct there. But then clients are like, I'm going to do bi-weekly. No, let's do it every 45 days. Let's do it two weeks. And then next month I'm going to do it for the full month. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's probably on me um but it's just a little bit all over the place there's yeah. multiple different income streams because then there's endorsements but then this one's net 30 this one's net 90 mm -hmm. and that's all just like i have a little list of things that i am owed and things that i do and i'm very very elementary with it but that's something that i'm working on no i mean and that that's everybody this yeah there was a there was a three different surveys that were done, I think between 2012 and 2015, and they surveyed small business owners, what your, what's your least favorite part of owning a business? In each one, it was 40% was accounting. Like nothing else even registered in the double digits. It was far <laughs> away, everyone's least favorite part. Oh yeah. So, no, I mean, you're, you're far from alone in, in that sentiment. Yeah, God. <laughs> All right, cool. So question number four, and you got a couple minutes. Give me a tip that every online business owner should know. What's your, what's your biggest tip for anyone listening? My gosh. Yeah. Whether it's online or offline, if we can go with it like that, well, we touched on it earlier. I think it's, it's got to come from knowing your personal why your business why that changes everything. I think that's very foundational 
And then it gets into, okay, now you have what your goal is, you know what you're shooting for. And then I was the person for a long time who had chased rabbits, as my yeah. mentor called it. I'm over here selling phone cases from Alibaba on Snapchat. And then I'm over here writing a book that thankfully became a number one bestseller. But where are those things getting me to? They're not linear. Maybe they could be if I knew where the heck I was trying to go. But I just had a great idea and I acted on it. And then I had another great idea and I acted on it. I'm a high risk taker. Just mm -hmm. go do it, see if it works. Fail 99 times out of 100. But cool things keep happening. Yeah, if I don't know where I'm going. Things are big enough to offset all the other stuff. Yeah, thankfully so far, knock on some wood. But if I knew here's where I want to go, I'm selling phone cases to make two grand that I'm using to do this, that's going to help me get here. And I would start to build a stair step. But for a while, I'm just like doing everything with no rhyme or reason. So I look up for four years and I'm like, what, what have I done? I've done a lot of cool stuff, but I'm nowhere closer to where I want to go. And so once you identify those whys and where you want to go, mm -hmm. then I think it is a matter of consistency, but authenticity. You can tell in five seconds around being somebody if they're being authentic with you or not. That is just a vibe thing. So especially for online creators, it's really hard for people to turn on the camera and see the red. They're like so good in person, but the second you get the mic's on, or the second you turn yeah. the camera on, they're like, here's what I want to teach you today. <laughs> and they just turn into this a totally other person. Yeah. And so that's where consistency comes in. It's practice like anything. First time you shoot a basketball, you're going to suck. Everybody starts with zero followers. There is yeah. a baseline, but you have to be consistently yeah. authentic to really start to grow. Too many people are trying to copy other people. And there's something to be said about not reinventing the wheel. Here's what works, but you have to put your spin on it, right? right. Like your expertise, being a CPA even, it's different than just, I'm another numbers guy out there. There, right you have a very carved out expertise there's so many people out there that it'll drive me nuts where the example we gave one time was being a, a tribute band versus being an actual like artist or creator there's nothing wrong with being a tribute band but there's all these basically gary v tribute bands out there is what uh, effective yeah. it is and all these people who are doing their best grant cardone impression possible and you're not going to be as good and since you're not being yourself then you're just this, you're the, yeah, you're this poor man's imi imitation. And like, I like what you say about authenticity because part of what we started and what we say at the outset is there's so many people who are phonies in this space. And sometimes it's not even that they're bad people. It's just that they're, they're presenting themselves so badly and they're doing what they think they need to do. Yeah. It ends up being these gross exaggerations, these stories that aren't believable. And, these weird sort of personas that yeah. aren't them. And if it were them, then that would be fine. If this is the person you are, whether you love it or hate it, at least it's you. Yeah. yeah. But it's that whole fake it till you make it mentality to where there's yeah. something in that, like manifestation. I am this, I am this, already operating from the finish line <laughs> mentally, but not like being a douche canoe on the way. Right. Like people can tell. <laughs> Right. And well, it, it's sort of like, it's sort of like MLMs where people, the, there's such a disparity between where people claim they are and what the clear reality of their life is. Like, I'm so happy I started this little home-based business and it's allowing me to stay home with my kids and everything. Well, you started it two weeks ago and like... <laughs> Just it, the story obviously doesn't add up. And that's kind of what I see a lot of on these Facebook posts is people are talking about how they're crushing it and how they just, they tripled this client's business in the first week and how just the data points, nothing adds up to yeah. what their business is. And, and I get it. You, you want to, there's a lot more like braggadocio in this space there. You want to present success, but yeah if you're being so transparently false with what you're saying, uh, yeah. you're not doing yourself a favor either. No, you're not. At least the people who know how to tell the difference. You may uh, fool a lot of people, poor guys, but well, to the and, ones you actually want to do business with, right. you're not yes, fooling exactly. yeah. yeah, you might be able to fool the lowest common denominator, but the people who you actually want to work with and who can actually afford to work with you, are yeah. you realistically fooling that half of the population. 
All right. All right. Well said. Cool. All right. So last question. And this one, we give the choice of one of two things. Either what's the craziest thing you've seen sold online or what's the craziest tactic you've seen to sell something online? <laughs> uh, craziest, I'll answer both. The craziest thing I've ever seen sold online was an air guitar. Like literally air guitar sold for like a thousand bucks, something like that. Ridiculous. And they just mailed the guy an empty box and he takes a picture like, <laughs> But <laughs> hilarious. I saw on, face, on Facebook Marketplace last week, someone was selling an empty Coke can that they just drank. And I bid on it. I was like, I'll give you $5 because this is funny. Was it a um, sales copy like associated with No, it? no, <laughs> nothing. Nothing even remotely good about it. But for some reason, that, that's weird and endearing to me. Um, the weirdest tactic is actually probably a lot of the stuff that I do. Like, we're testing something right now. Um, mass story viewer has been a really popular way to grow on Instagram. Basically, if there's a glitch in the loophole, call it a glitch, but um, there's no terms of service being applied to how many stories you can view per hour. It has changed in the last 30 days or so. But before, it was like you could view 15 million stories a day. 15 million stories. So you would give us a target list. Say it's all these entrepreneurs their followers might like you if they knew you existed. So you go watch all of Gary Vee's followers' stories and they feel validated. It's like, oh my gosh, the Southern Big Entrepreneurs looking at my stories and it drove three times the amount of engagement. Really? I mean, your DMs are blowing up. It's, and it's crazy and it's still a really effective method. Um, yeah, that's the, interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. But knowing that that's, people are going to catch on to that and that's not... Yeah the best method of all methods however it exists and we can run it for you if you would like us to um not the craziest longevity to it probably exactly yeah. exactly so highly effective i mean we're driving 500 followers a day for yeah. some of our clients um and it's it's great but it's still it's inauthentic yeah. to a degree um so what we're doing is even weirder we're taking the same approach but on tinder taking that same code and having people make Tinder profiles. So like fake Adley, we could have a Tinder profile and in the bio it would say, Hey, I'm not on here very much, but hit me up on IG at Adley. And we would go through 15 million swipes a day. So it's uh, just what mass traffic, mass exposure, yeah. but on Tinder. So do I really want people thinking I'm on Tinder, like looking for that? Right. Uh, it would have to be like, I'm still looking for the exact practical application. But it's kind of funny, and it's yeah. we can do it. So, yeah. <laughs> if you want fifteen thousand swipes on Tinder, we we got you. Well, that, <laughs> well that's that's cool too because in what you said, sort of at the outset of it, is that there's just you know they're going to close the loophole. That's what's always funny to me when you can tell people or have either. A lot of times they bought a course on digital marketing, and then they're selling themselves as digital marketers. Because by the time they complete, you know, by the time this person figured it out, yeah. created the course, distributed, sold it, you're already six months behind the yeah. curve there. And then by the time this person does the course starts, you're talking six to 12 months usually. Half the time those tactics are dead by that point. It changes so fast. Yeah, right now. And that's really why um, in this conversation, maybe even a little you know, premature, we spoke a little bit about the transition I'm making. My right. ultimate goal is not to build an Instagram growth agency. Like I yeah. fell into it yeah. and if people want the tactics. I've never advertised, not for yeah. a day. It's all been word of mouth. And so if somebody comes to me, they know I can do this because a friend gave me the challenge. I was like, I wonder if that's possible. And I ran it for a couple people. Do I agree that you should do it? No, but you're going to sign up on some terms of service saying you're not holding me liable right. necessarily, but I can get it done for you if you want it, but I'm not saying it's the right way to do things. Yeah. Um, but that's not ultimately what I want to build long term. Yeah. So um, there's this stepping back for that. I don't, I know too much. I don't want to know that these things are possible because then the curiosity, the little kid in me is like, well, we could do it on Tinder. We could do it on this. And then my wheels start spinning, but that's not the most appropriate use of my time right to stay linear to our conversation earlier yeah you know have, have a lot of fun doing it, it can be a fun hop, profitable hobby calling it a hobby is the wrong thing 
But yeah, at yeah. some point you might get burned out if, if it's not. Yeah, well, especially with Instagram, the algorithm's changing every 45, I mean, like 45 hours, every 48 hours, something new is changing to where the method that I signed this client on for a month long contract, cool, we're a week into it. This just happened to us this week. We're a week into it. That method just became obsolete. So yeah. either I need to find another growth hack to give you your 10K a month deliverable, right. or I got to refund your money. Like, it's not the business that I want to be yeah. in because it is so volatile right now. And it, the dust will settle with Instagram in the next few months. But again, it's not my long term goal. You're always having to chase things and figure things out. And though it's fun and I like the challenge, I like being in the percentage of people who knows this mix of a black hat, white hat world. Yeah. And an app that's so popular, um, I can't, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Well, it's, I mean, like you said, it's fun, but it's also exhausting. It's so ever changing, so rapidly changing. It's, you know, it's yeah, it, yeah. Um, you could have a lot of fun doing it, but you, like, you could also just exhaust yourself very easily doing that long term. I could see. Yeah. yeah. Come in. Someone's coming in my house. Hello. Oh. Okay. Can you give me one second? That's the maintenance guy. Sure. Oh. Sorry. Good thing you can edit this. Sorry, Micah. <laughs> I'm just going to decide exactly when to clip that. Because I think <laughs> And that's how that interview was finished. All that time, but a little bit of it might be fun. Um, yeah. All right. Well, cool. So that gets us through all the questions. So again, thanks so much for being here. Really had a lot of fun talking to you. For anyone watching or listening, what's your email? What, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Best way would be, I mean, typically, it's such a millennial thing to say, but on Instagram, okay. it's at, you know, it's Adley, A-D-L-E-Y. Uh, we're on Facebook. You can check out our episodes, The Adley Show. We have a lot of fun over there. And my email's Adley at Adley.tv. Okay, awesome. Again, thanks so much for being here. I had a blast. To everyone watching, thanks again for watching The Few, The Proud, The Profitable, where we only talk to high-level online businesses. Thanks for watching, and check us out next time.